Hey everybody, I'm uh, sh hold on. Hey everybody, I'm Sean. Today we're gonna make something kind of cool. <laughs> Do you have somewhere important to be and you want everyone to notice you're there? And everyone to know your name? This is what you need. Everyone's seen the stickers, hello my name is, and you write your name on there. This looks exactly like that only. It clips on your pocket. Battery powered. Arduino powered. So let's look at, have a look at how to make this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our 3D prints ready. Because really when they're printing, then you can probably work away at the soldering and all the other fun stuff. Now, if your name happens to be Sean and you spell it the same way I do, you can skip the first part and just go straight to the Cura setup. But if it's not, what you're going to have to do is go to the link for the on shape part. There are a number of parts. Some of the parts are set up as just one big name faceplate. That's the way I used to do it, and if that's how you like to do it, then then that's a good one to use. This one happens to be split so that the top part can be that red section with the white lettering, or whatever colors you want to use, and then the rest of it will be the clear section. And then this is the one that I like the best because it looks the most like that sticker name tag where you can have the re either red or blue on the top and bottom and the clear through the middle. And you can see the way it's set up is it gives a place for the red or the colored strips to glue to. We're actually going to glue those on later on. But the one part you're probably going to want to change is the name. First thing we want to do before we edit the text, just to save ourselves some trouble later on, is we're going to delete the extrusion. What that's actually going to do is this extrusion here is just for the letters. We draw the letters in two dimensions. I can show you that this is how much the letters pop out. Now the way this is lined up it it's gonna work great with these with this name but as soon as you change the name it it goes a little wonky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that ex extrusion right here. Then we're going to line up and we can use the mouse wheel to scroll in and then we're going to edit the sketch. So there's there's basically either two or three steps depending on uh, how lucky you get. We edit the text first, that's always the step. And if your name happens to be the same length as mine, then things work out pretty well because it'll only be two steps. Basically you've changed the name and said OK by editing the text and then you have to recenter it by using transform. That's available up here and all I do is I drag the center line of the text to line up with the center line of the drawing and you click somewhere outside of the drawing and it'll move it over for you. Now if you weren't quite that lucky I'll show you why there would be a third step. If we edit text, and let's say the name is a little bit longer, it's not really going to fit on this name tag so well anymore. So what we can do is if we, if we scale down the height of it, it'll automatically scale down the width as well. So if we go to maybe 18 for this one, Then we just do exactly what we did before and transform it so that it, it's centered again. Once again, line up the center line, click outside, and there, now you have Morty. So when you click the little check mark up here, you go back to your main drawing and you'll see that it's not bumpy anymore. That's because we deleted that extrusion. So if we go up to here, we're going to make a new extrusion. I make it six millimeters tall.
And you can see now we have our tag ready to go. So the last thing you want to do right here is export. So we export whatever name you want to call it. Format will be STL. Leave the rest the same. And uh, and then when you hit OK, it'll ask you where you want to save it. And then we'll go over to our 3D printing program, in this case, Cura. And well, I'm going to show you how to how to get the printer to pause at the right time. So you can see we're back to uh, my regular tag in here. You, when you load it up, it might actually be in the wrong orientation. But if you use this on the ro rotate, you can drag it around to the right position. But once it's there, what we want to do is we want to tell the program to pause at a certain height. So when we go to plugins, there's a pause at height plugin which is part of the defaults for Cura. And it has a number of different values that we can use. So this is the main one. This is the height we want to pause at. Uh, where we want to park the head, my suggestion here is definitely for the X to go to zero. That usually on most printers will make it easier for you to change it over because it's up against the stop or near the stop so you know where it is. And if you happen to move your head by accident while you're trying to change the material, you know exactly where it's supposed to be. And then the rest of it you can leave as the, the default. But the main question here is, where do we pause? How do we figure that out? So Kira has these view modes normally in normal that shows you the whole model what we want is layers and uh, not just layers you can see that it's actually showing us more than one layer at the same time what we want to see is only whatever the current layer is so right now it's only showing us layer 10 and you can see that while it's printing 7, 8, 9, 10 all of these it's printing the base behind the letters it's not actually printing the letters and all of a sudden when we get to layer 13 that's the first layer that is just the letters so what we want to do is we want to pause between 12 and 13 so if we take that number 12 and we look at our layer height which for me is 0.26 you can do some very simple math 0.26 times 12 that means it will have finished everything before the letters at 3.12 millimeters and it'll start the next one 0.26 millimeters later so 3.38 if I got that right so where I would say we pause just as a, a safe number that we know it's going to pause after this layer and and before the next it's probably 3.2 so that's what we're going to type in in our plugin. 3.2 millimeters. So then what it's going to do is when when it pauses uh, and depending on how you have it set up, you might have to just watch it. You can go in. You can change the material to the new color. So in this case, I started with a clear PLA and I switched it to a black. And that gave me the the clear see-through window uh, which is actually opaque once you print it out with the black lettering on top and then what we can do is you just save your g-code or if you're using Cura straight connected to the, to the printer you can print from there but a few other settings I'll show you uh, I do a fill density of about 20 percent I keep my speeds down you see that my print really didn't come out very nice. That's because my red, I think, has a little too much water in it. It needs to be cooked off because all my other colors seem to print out really nice right now. So, yeah, that's all you got to do. You print out that piece. You'll want to do the same thing with uh, the top, the, the spot that says, hello, my name is. And you'll notice I did exactly the same thing. I used the layer mode, figured out where the text started, and you'll notice I used red with the white lettering. 
You could use blue with, with white lettering as well, or any color you want, really. So yeah, that's it. So we're going to need a few things to put this together. First thing is the 3D printed parts. This is the back of it. Holds everything. Now this is another back, but what I want to show here is two clips. Those are the clips that go on your pocket. Faceplate. Now if you don't have a multicolor printer, don't panic. This was done on a single color printer and I'll show you how. It's actually a very neat trick and a very useful because you might use it a lot. You'll need your electronics. So these are 2032 coin cells. Two of them. You'll need some paper clips. You'll need an Arduino. I use the Nano. Very convenient to program and very, very convenient to hook up and doesn't take a lot of space. Some kind of a switch. Now if you made the bulb from last time and you were able to find that little bulb, I actually took the switch out of that one to make this one. And then you'll need your RGB lights. These are called WS2812. It's, it's a tiny little RGB LED and RGB means red, green, blue. And it's got some circuitry on it so you can put them all in a chain and your microprocessor can actually talk to all of them. Very nice to use. Only takes one pin from your processor. Then some hookup wire. I highly recommend multicolored so you can have different colors to show different things so that you don't get confused because I get confused. And as long as you have a soldering iron and some patience you'll be able to make something very cool. So once you're done, it should look something like this. You can see the coin cells, one's pointed down, one's pointed up. That's so you can get a full 6 volts. I added a switch, so the red, which is the positive, you can actually see a positive right on the battery, goes to the switch and then from the switch to the Arduino. Now where you want to connect it on the Arduino is the VN, because what that is, is it'll take a, a voltage above 5 volts, above 6 really, and it'll turn it into 5 volts regulated. Then you'll also want the black to go to the ground. And then all you need to do is hook these guys up. So you can see we have a ground going to ground. A 5 volt, so the regulator is not only supplying the Arduino, but it's also going to supply our lights. So the 5 volt goes to the 5 volt. And then I used a white wire for the signal. Now the signal is simple enough. You see a DI and a DO. That's digital in, digital out. So what you do is you run everything to the inside from the Arduino and then you take the output and put it to the input of the next one and the output to the input of the next one. The next thing we got to do is uh, install the library so that we can program it. So if you go to sketch, include library, manage libraries, once it loads up you can actually do a search and what we're looking for is NeoPixel. So you can see this is the one I installed, Adafruit NeoPixel by Adafruit. Install that little puppy. And once it's installed, you can go to file slash examples. And down at the very bottom you see NeoPixel. And then you'll see some choices. So the one we want is strand test. So once you get that loaded up, there's only one thing you gotta change. You can see it's 
pin 6 which is what we use to solder ours up but you can see is this code set up for 60 LEDs which we don't have we have 3 you just change that number to 3 plug in your board make sure your board is set up in here uh, I picked the Arduino Nano and ensure that your port is the right one and then you just click upload and it'll compile and upload So I hope you enjoy making this project. Everything you need should be down in the description. Follow the instructions and everything should work out. So uh, enjoy it and I'll see you next time.